The East Tennessee Community Design Center is a nonprofit organization founded in 1970 with a mission to envision, inspire, and improve East Tennessee through design. We serve other nonprofits and community organizations in 16 East Tennessee counties. Over the years, Design Center volunteers and staff have completed almost 1,100 projects for the betterment of our communities. We've continued through the years with the tradition of helping those in need and a belief that we can improve communities by design. As we celebrate our 50th anniversary, join us in taking a look back at some of the projects we are most proud of and volunteers we are most privileged to work with. We start in the 1970s with the conception of the Design Center and its work with the Imes Nature Center. In 1975, the East Tennessee Community Design Center worked on the expansion of the Iams Nature Center. The adaption of the modest HP Iams House was to serve as the Nature Center office and interpretive center. The Design Center also worked to develop new trails and overlooks in an effort to further diversify the park. As the property expanded, we originally used the home place as the visitor center, and I mean, it wasn't even adequate for our family of four, so it really didn't work when things really started to expand and more and more people were coming. The design center put together the visitor center, which was just an awesome blend. It had such a arms feel to it, and it's open, and it has stood the test of time. That's been over 50 years. They did a great job of just capturing the feel of what Iams is. Landscape architect David Kendall and architect Bruce McCarty were the volunteer designers on the comprehensive master planning effort. With their close assistance, Iams transformed into one of Knoxville's most visited parks. impact to me from the East Tennessee Community Design Center is really everything that my life is now. Mm -hmm. And that seems awfully huge to say, but I met my husband there. I got married in Annette's living room. Um, <laughs> I got my it job is. at TVA through um, Jean Moorfield. And I just feel like uh, my whole life was designed by the design yeah. center, the way things came out. You know, one of the neatest things about coming to the Design Center and sitting down at uh, some of the, the first board meetings is the difference of all the people that were there, the professionals, the volunteers, uh, the uh, community organizers, all mixing together and having one goal to the improve community. the community. And that, that had a big impact on me, that understanding that people could do that. Nearly 10 years before the transition of the former Lakeshore Mental Health Institute into a public park, the Design Center worked to develop walking and jogging trails for the staff and residents. These trails became the beginnings of today's park. They were then opened to the general public in 1995, and soon after, the football and soccer fields were added for public use. After the closing of the hospital in 2012, the entire campus became Lakeshore Park. The East Tennessee Community Design Center was very instrumental in designing the trail system um, that was here currently before we added some additions to it. So it was really mainly for the residents and then um, it became public for everybody else's use after that time. Especially during COVID, it has been a place of refuge for a lot of people. Um, if you look around, like today we're out here, there's a church service going on, there are people picnicking, there's somebody having a Bible study, there are people that are doing sports or things for kids. Um, but it's a place where people can just sit and be. Uh, we have people that are just bird watching. We have people that just want to come out and they're studying, doing classwork. So it really is a place for everybody and everyone. My parents immigrated here. They are Palestinian by heritage. We came here and now at the age of 13. As many immigrants do struggle over time, so did they. But I ended up attending the University of Tennessee through grants. So I felt very fortunate. Uh, I had a lot given to me. And I felt that that's a great way of giving back to the community with my passion, what I can do, being the architecture. The major impact has been really about meeting people meeting fantastic people, uh, going places, 
seeing parts of East Tennessee that I would have not seen otherwise. The Beck Cultural Exchange Center was established as a storehouse of African-American history and culture. Many of Knoxville's African-American population, businesses, churches, and neighborhoods were relocated or displaced. Absent the establishment of Beck, these places and people may have never existed. The Design Center developed an addition for the Beck Center, which included the 5,000 square foot Great Hall and smaller meeting areas, allowing the center to expand its services to the community. In 1918, we had the same issues that we were fighting and dealing with when we were talking about the Spanish flu. In 1919, we had the biggest racial epidemic that our country had seen during the red summer of 1919. Both of those things were happening simultaneously. So we always say, you want to know what impact Beck has had? It's telling truth, it's telling the history, because history is the place where we learn we grow and we're better. There's nothing new under the sun. I'm a native Knoxvillian, born and raised. I have lived here my entire life, even went to the University of Tennessee. This is home. So personally for me, the East Tennessee Design Center means the world. I need them to be here. I need them to be doing great work because I love this community and the things that they're doing is making an impact. And that's the kind of legacy we want to have in our neighborhood and our community and indeed so that the world can come to this little place called Knoxville, Tennessee and say, how did they figure out all of this stuff? How did they get it right? How did they become the beloved community? I believe the East Tennessee Community Design Center can play a role in that. It does play a role in that. And I think we need them to be great so they can continue to do that. I had come here in 1967 uh, to work for the Tennessee Valley Authority, came from uh, North Carolina State University. So I knew absolutely no one <laughs> in town <laughs> except the people I worked with. And as time went by and the design center got up and running, uh, I met everybody. When I arrived in Knoxville, the Morningside Urban Renewal Area was at its height and many of the older buildings were being torn down. And uh, it was clear that uh, someone like the Design Center should be speaking up uh, for those special places so that they were not all cleared. I understood uh, in my young career how good design happened by listening and then acting. So. It was a very, <laughs> very good experience for me, and I hope we made some good contributions to the city. I believe we did. The Design Center mapped over 1,000 acres of greenways, trails, parks, civil war sites, and other public amenities along the urban wilderness. Since this visioning process, the urban wilderness has created an exceptional recreation and historic corridor for experiencing all Knoxville has to offer. There are currently over 50 miles of trail connecting multiple parks and cultural sites within the urban wilderness. The Design Center was really a partner on the urban wilderness from the very beginning. They, they, we had the concept and the idea and, and thought it was a great idea uh, of connecting these public parks and open spaces and natural areas and nature centers. But we really needed someone to validate that for us and to come up with a plan and show that the connectivity really did exist there. And so they were, they were critical in the very beginning to really validating that, yes, you could connect these public places and create one destination. The Design Center is really important to Legacy Parks Foundation. We've probably partnered on a, on a half a dozen projects and all of them have come to fruition at this point. So they really help take a vision that we have and, and translate it and make it workable and doable and, and really shareable to be able to say, here is what we are thinking and people can look at that plan and understand it. Legacy Parks Foundation enlisted the aid of our volunteer advisor, Sean Vasington, to help them identify the existing green spaces in South Knoxville and develop potential connections between these amenities. It's given me a, a sense of belonging to the community because of the involvement I was able to give back to the community. What I see it is mostly a, a coming together of people. So here you've got a, a single idea that comes up and then all of a sudden people start to get interested in it. They, you know, they meet, they give feedback. 
and all of a sudden it becomes a real thing. You know, these people take the work, they raise money, they get it, they get the project done. Dating back to 1912, Aeromont has long stood as a beacon of art, craft, and creativity tucked into the heart of Gatlinburg, Tennessee. In February 2016, the East Tennessee Community Design Center worked to develop a master plan for the Aeromont campus. That plan included assessing current conditions of buildings and site, analyzing traffic flow, and connections to Gatlinburg, the Parkway, and proposed developments. The overarching concept was to develop a pedestrian-friendly campus with clearly delineated walkways and roadways, including areas throughout for artwork, all leading to a new central hub of the campus. The Aramont campus has a wide variety of architectural styles because it was developed uh, over such a long period of time. And the East Tennessee Community Design Center collaborated and listened to understand what our needs were because our needs were practical, but they were also aesthetic. The East Tennessee Community Design Center is a great resource and obviously makes it possible for nonprofits and organizations such as ours to, uh, to have this, those services uh, at little or no cost. Bill Bruce, Judy Nielsen, and Brandon Pace volunteered closely with other members from the Design Center in formulating a plan for the campus. After surveying and discussing the options for Aeromont, the team ultimately decided to discuss four different campus entrance options current and future parking requirements, the need for additional structures, and new site elements. I'd say the clear impact of the Design Center's work, mine but also others, because as a volunteer, you typically never work as a solo person. It's always with a group of people, which is also wonderful. It's a wonderful the way they work. You work with Again, the staff, you work with an intern, sometimes you work with architects or engineers on projects. So, um, but the impact of the community is the community is able to get off square one where they can get funding for a real project. So the design center is not set up where we compete. We set the community up so they can go after grant funding. They can create a vision through the design center that allows them to raise funds through grants or through the community. The projects we have featured here, along with many more throughout the years, have made a huge impact in our region, but they would not be possible without the generous work of our volunteers, supporters, and staff. As a volunteer myself, I've seen firsthand the kind of direct, positive impact we can have in so many people's lives. In the next 50 years, the Design Center will be ambitiously continuing our mission to improve communities but we need your help to accomplish our goals. You can donate directly to our organization today, and your money will go to a group in need of our support. You can ensure that this work will continue for decades to come by becoming a member of our Design Vision Society through our new estate giving program. Or you can volunteer your time to work directly with the Design Center on one of our numerous upcoming programs or projects. We are in need of not only designers, contractors, and engineers, but anyone who wants to make a difference in their community. Please go to our website or reach out to us directly to get involved. And let's work together for another 50 years making our communities better by design.